This is going to suck. That one's going to be a Whew, What a pain in the ass this is. Welcome to the Aquaculture Channel. Featuring my 1989 44-foot DeFever offshore cruiser. And myself, Ashley Ringlespa, a.k.a. Captain Butch. Join me as we perform some boat maintenance and repairs and enjoy the benefits that come with this amazing lifestyle. I have been living aboard for the last 12 years and I look forward to sharing with you what I have learned and the experiences that happen along the way. This is the Aquacultured Life. In the last video I showed you all of the issues I've had with my old Westerbeek generator from the front end to the back end failure. So this video I'm going to show you how I removed the back end so that it could be rebuilt and then reinstalled so that we could be generating electricity again. I hope this video will be helpful in the case that you run into a similar issue so that you know what to expect when removing the back end and the process may go a little bit easier for you. All right, so here's our trusty 12.5 BTD Westerbeek generator. And so as I mentioned, the last time I worked on this, we put a new exhaust manifold on there, new freshwater circulation pump. I uh, replaced the raw water pump impeller. We replaced the pencil zinc on the heat exchanger, which that's due already. The one thing we did not do is replace the housing for the thermostat and replace the thermostat because these bolts here are essentially fused to the engine here so we've got to cut those off but it's still in decent enough condition we're going to let that run for a little bit longer and then we'll address that. And then of course also we put a new mixing elbow on the exhaust manifold. So the front end of the engine is in good condition, runs great, starts right up, doesn't smoke, and stays at the proper operating temperature. But now the back end of the unit where it produces the electricity needs to be addressed. So we need to pull this housing off of the back of the generator, essentially remove it from the engine block. We need to support it back here so that when we unbolt it, it doesn't come down onto the armature. Uh, so we've got to remove the starter here. There's some wires um, that we need to disconnect. This guy here and then go around and unbolt the housing from the engine. And then we're going to back that thing off and then we'll have a good look at the armature in there. And so it looks like we've got just enough clearance to get the back end off so hopefully that goes all right and then we'll be able to get to the armature take that to Tampa armature and and then have them rewound it or rewind it and we'll put it back on and hopefully everything works great all right so we're making some pretty good progress tearing this puppy apart so far I have taken the two bolts out for the starter but the starter is pretty much frozen to the uh, back end of the generator so I've got to give it some uh, some finesse to get that thing off of there I have disconnected the control box from the top of the back end housing so it's just four bolts there um, I went ahead and disconnected the electrical connections the main electrical connections on the back of the unit pulled them out here are the wires over here make sure you definitely take photos as you go along so you know when you're going to put it back together where everything goes and there's a good chance that you're not going to put it back together for a little while so you're definitely going to forget where everything goes when it, the time comes and then the other thing I'm doing right now is taking these Ziploc bags and I'm labeling them uh, with the section of the generator that these parts are coming from so that I know what they belong to so then when we get to putting the armature back on and putting everything back together I know where the hell everything goes because I've had it too many times where I don't realize what bolt goes to where and then I end up with the extra pieces or not enough or whatever so 
gonna avoid that as much as possible. So next I am disconnecting the main bolts all the way around so that it will release this back end. I'm sure I'll have to pry it to uh, break it free. I have a piece of wood here supporting the back end so that when I do free up the back end it's supported and it's not going to weigh down on the armature or any of the other sensitive parts. I do need to unbolt the feet here, the isolators, so that we'll free that up. So things are going all right so far. The bolts are um, loosening up nicely, but I know that I'm going to have to pry the sucker off, so that's going to be the fun part. So we'll see how that goes. So once you crack these suckers free, they spin out pretty easily. But I've heard some stories where bolts are or they can be really uh, corroded and I've heard others had to cut these suckers off so I'm very happy that they're in good shape that one's gonna be a bitch there's a bolt on the other side of the generator up underneath and one of the main electrical connections attached to that bolt so it leaves very little room to get a bite on that head so this is going to suck yeah I think that's all of them except for the isolators the feet so those look like they're gonna be a pain too because I gotta be able to reach the nut on the underside in order to Loosen up the top side. Super fun. So now, with the bolts removed, I'm using a screwdriver and a hammer to free up the back end from the main block. And I'm sure there's other types of equipment that you could use in order to pull the back end off of the engine block, but I just did it the old fashioned way. Oh, and I should be wearing shoes too, so I'm not leading a very good example. Alright, so we got the back end off. Took some finesse. So essentially had to just pry that thing back, keep wedging screwdrivers in there to keep it going, keep the wood underneath this back end because it's quite heavy. And here's the armature. So now we need to get that thing off of there. Yeah, I would say the bearing went bad. There she is, what's left of her. Shred it up, there's the balls that go in there, and that goes on the end there, goes back into that bell housing all the way back there, and sure enough, that's what happened, so bearing failed, dropped down, and tore some stuff up. taking the stator housing and the armature down to Broward Armature and Generator Repair down in Fort Lauderdale. I initially took it to Tampa Armature since it was a little closer, but they were unsure about taking on the job. So ended up taking it down to Broward because they said, no problem. It's going to cost about $2,700 plus tax. And they actually just rebuilt some parts for a Westerbeek generator. So that would help speed things up. So I drove it down on a Monday 
They took it apart, stripped everything down, they even sandblasted the stator housing, they rebuilt the armature, rebuilt the stator, and even repainted the uh, stator housing, plus they replaced all of the electrical connections on the back of the stator housing, which is amazing. And then they actually hooked it up to a machine, put a load on it, tested it, and gave me a written report. So it was amazing service. And they actually had it ready for me on Thursday. So it took them three days to do that. Extremely quick. They did a hell of a job. Definitely recommend them. If you need a generator to be worked on, check them out. They'll do very good work for you and are very helpful and friendly. I will put a link to their contact info below. So give Dan a call down there at Broward Armature. Okay, so here's the generator. I'll take it apart. So you can see where the stator housing connects up to the engine block there. This is what spins the armature. Here's the starter, which I ended up not having to take off, which is a good thing because it's pretty much frozen into place. It still looks like it's in good shape, so I just left it there. So there's the control box over there. And now we have the rebuilt armature here. You can see the, the new bearing. This is what failed on the armature, which allowed the armature to go off axis and chew things up inside the stator housing. So here's the refurbished stator housing. You can see it's nice and pretty and red. So they sandblasted it and repainted it. Here's all the nice, pretty new wire connections they supplied. So you can see the inside of the stator housing all, all nice and shiny and new looking. So now this old 30 year old generator will have a new life. So the first thing we're going to do is connect the armature to this flywheel here. And so I'm going to carry that back here and get that mounted on and then we'll put the stator housing on. in the ass this is. So it's very difficult to get the armature lined up with the holes so you can mount it to the flywheel. So see I've got it shimmed up here. Got a little piece there to just get it up just right. So getting those first bolts is not an easy task. And you've got these wires and crap in the way. So definitely is not easy and then I got to get these shims out of there so that I can get this to really meet up well. So the reason it's so difficult to get the armature back onto the engine is because the fan is separate from the mounting plate so you have to line up the holes from the fan to the mounting plate to the flywheel so that is very difficult by yourself. If you had the space to have an extra set of hands there it definitely would go easier. Okay the armature is in place. Got all the bolts in. That was a task. And of course the last bolt was a pain in the ass to get on there. There's a new bearing. Beautiful. So now, the next part is getting the heavy piece up here and getting it in place. So that's going to be fun as well. And as you can see I'm sweating up a storm because it's a little warm in here. So much fun. So this time I had an extra set of hands, so what we did was use a piece of wood to use as a lever to lift the engine block high enough that I could slide the stator housing over the armature and clear where the feet will attach to the isolator bolts. And of course you could use more sophisticated equipment to do this, but you don't always have that wherever you go, so we just did it the basic way. We got that thing just about all the way in, so we're going to tap it with a mallet on the back to get it the rest of the way so we can line up the, the mounts there and we put those in and then start bolting this sucker to the engine. Lots of fun, isn't it? That's teamwork. Use this for leverage to lift up the engine so that we can get the stator housing over it. And then you can see we've got it shim we had it shimmed up with this uh, dunnage just to get it started. Making progress. 
Just get my quad workout. Got the bolts in for the mounting legs. That was a pain. We about have this thing lined up and set in place. Now it's just a matter of bolting it together and connecting the wires. And hopefully that's it. Holy sh <laughs> Putting the pieces back together. This is why you take photos of where everything goes. And even when you take photos, sometimes it's not so clear. All right, so I think I got everything hooked up. Everything's bolted together. All the wires are connected. We've got the battery leads here connected. We've got the wiring here in the back of the unit all hooked up. Hopefully that's all right. It's a little different than uh, when it came off. And that's because it was different. You can see there are little jumper plates that you set in a certain configuration so that the unit either puts out 240 volts of electricity or 120 volts of electricity. My unit is set up for 120 volts, which when I took it to Broward Armature, they were set up at a perpendicular orientation, which means they're set up for 120 volts. But when they bench tested the unit, they had it set up for 240 volts and that's how they returned it to me. And I foolishly thought that that's just how it should be now because they did all of the new wiring back there and I thought that's just how it should be. So rather than doing the smart thing and calling down to Broward Armature to double check, I went ahead and started the generator which ended up frying my voltage regulator which necessitated me to take the back end back off take it back down to Broward Armature for them to repair that voltage regulator which costs another twelve or fourteen hundred dollars and put the unit all back together all because I didn't take five minutes to call down to Broward Armature so do not be like me do the right thing and double check all right now everything is put back together and running great I'm just gonna summarize real quick how the process went um, so all together to get the armature and stator off it should take you no more than a day as long as you don't have to go cutting bolts off and stuff um, but there are about nine or ten of these main bolts that go around the perimeter of the stator housing to the engine block. Uh, there are some wires you got to disconnect. There's a battery cable there. There's a small little cable there. Um, you have to take your control box off. This is where I have my gauges and start and stop and preheat. There's four little bolts at the bottom that you remove and you can just set that off to the side. The this plate here comes off that's how you access the main wiring back there for my unit I have the wires going in through the side there's only a, a handful of wires that you have to disconnect there it's pretty straightforward so remove those and uh, hang those off to the side and of course as you're doing all this make sure you take photos uh, so you know exactly where everything goes because it's going to be a little, a little while before you put everything back together uh, I used screwdrivers to remove the back end and pry it off and then pull it off the rest of the way. And as you saw, as I went to put it back on, and let me back up a little bit, as I'm removing it, I've got this thing shimmed up with dunnage so that it doesn't screw up the armature um, as you're pulling it off. So when you're putting it back on, you saw I had an extra set of hands to shim up the engine so that the stator could go on smoothly and mate up to the engine block. That last little gap there, I ended up not tapping it on. Um, I just pushed it on as far as I could get it, and then I put the main bolts through and wrenched those down to get it the rest of the way. Now you gotta be careful not to, um, you gotta make sure you go flush and it's not off kilt or anything like that because what happened to me was I binded up the fan when I was putting those bolts back together and I broke the fan. So not only did I have to have the uh, voltage um, regulator fixed, I also had to have that fan replaced. So just make sure as you are uh, tightening those bolts, it's going on evenly so that you don't have any issues like that. Um, so once you get all that put back together, put your wires back on, and you should be good to go. And of course you've got these, um, I failed to mention, the isolators, these uh, engine mounts uh, have a bolt each, so you gotta make sure you get those removed in order to get the back end off and then put those back on. They're a little bit of a pain because of the access underneath to get to the uh, nut under there, but it's doable. So I hope that's all helpful for you and you can do it yourself. Um, 
it costs, you know, if you did it right the first time, it should cost you no more than $3,000 to $3,500. And it's about two days of work uh, getting this thing off and then back together again. So now I can just start it down here. Thanks again for watching the Aquaculture channel. If you like what you saw, please like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you know when I post the next video. And remember, if you're not floating, you're sinking. So stay afloat, my friends. Up next, we're gonna replace a 30-year-old split air conditioning system and put in a brand new self-contained unit. So stay tuned.